Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first installation of Cooking with the Chef. I am Dr. Christina Wells, and I am the health ministry leader for the Lake Region Conference of Seven Day Adventists. And today is going to start off our wonderful series of learning about practical cooking techniques and how to apply those in your very own kitchen. We're so very happy that you joined us this afternoon, and we ask that you would take a moment and share this link with someone else and invite them to also be able to take part in this educational series. I, on behalf of our president and our administrative committee and our other directors, again, I welcome you and thank you for joining us this afternoon. We have an exciting program in store for you today. And today is gonna to be a lot about the fundamentals that we're gonna be providing as we go along. And so I thank you again, please, please share this link with someone else and invite them to join us this afternoon. So just some information about how we're going to proceed with our program. Just a disclaimer, the information that we're going to be providing today and in our future programs is for educational and informational purposes only. Make sure that you are seeing your doctor regularly and discussing your health conditions with them. And this information that we're providing should not replace the information that you discuss with your health care provider. Just so you know, again, we'll be doing these every month. And so our next class is going to be on April the 2nd. And then in May, we're going to be meeting on May the 21st. So those are our two upcoming classes. So make sure that you put those down on your, um, in your calendars. It'll be at the same time and at the same link. But we will be sending out information in between time. Um, and we'll talk later on about how you can register if you want any of the handouts or any additional information that we'll, we will be providing during this series. And so again, our next upcoming classes are April the 2nd and May the 21st. So just some information about what are the objectives of this program? Now, these are our objectives for today. And so by the end of today, and I would tell you, if you don't have a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil, go get it now because you're going to want to write down all the information that you're going to learn today, or you're going to want to at least go back and review this again. So please go get your pens and paper, your notebooks, so that you can take some notes. By the end of the program today, you will be able to understand the basics of nutrition and understand how to use herbs and spices to create flavorful meals. Many times I hear that people, when they're trying to change their diets, one of the things they say, well, I want to eat food that tastes good. And so the purpose of this cooking program is to be able to help you to create those meals that taste flavorful and good so that you will want to enjoy them for you, your family, and your friends. And so today we're going to be learning again more about our herbs and spices. How do we make food taste good? So just some background information before we go into our main feature. Our bodies, including our brains and other organs, they need nutrients to grow, reproduce, and maintain a healthy internal environment. So everything that you put in your mouth is broken down for use by your organs. Food is the fuel that our organs use to perform their daily functions. And again, the purpose of food is to provide nutrients to the body to help it to perform its daily functions. Food passes from the mouth to the esophagus, to the stomach, to the small intestine, to the large intestine or the colon, to the rectum, and then through the anus. So what are the seven basic components of food? So you have carbohydrates, protein, and fat, and we're going to be talking about all of those individually on our future programs. Fiber, which we'll hit on a little bit today and talk about more in our future programs. If you know me, you know that I love fiber. Vitamins, minerals, and water. These are the basic components of food. 
What are vitamins? Vitamins are things like vitamin E, vitamin K, and vitamin C, and they all individually have specific functions that they perform. In general, they help the body to grow and to function normally. Now, what about our minerals? Our minerals such as calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, iodine, and zinc, again, they all too have their specific individual functions and they're elements in food that help our bodies again to develop and function normally. What are phytochemicals? Phytochemicals are everything that plants have that you want. Phytochemicals are found in fruits, vegetables, grains, beans, and other plants. And some of these phytochemicals are believed to protect cells from damage that could lead to cancer. For example, su substances in food called isoflavones, they act as phytoestrogens, and they can protect from cancers such as breast and prostate. And so phytoestrogens are what you find in soy products. So we're going to talk about soy at a future a program because we don't want you to be afraid of soy because soy is actually very good because of these plant isoflavones and can actually scientific evidence shows that I, these isoflavones and phytoestrogens can actually protect against breast and prostate cancer. And for those of you who are Adventists and get the Lake Union Herald, please look for the next issue that's going to come up in April because I wrote a article on soy. So we don't want us to be afraid of soy, but we'll talk about soy more in our future programs. What are antioxidants? Antioxidants are substances that may protect your cells against free radicals. What are these free radicals? Free radicals may play a role in things like heart disease, cancer, and other diseases. They are molecules that are produced when your body breaks down food or when you're exposed to tobacco smoke or radiation. So things like air pollutants, tobacco smoke, alcohol, fried foods, pesticides, they can all generate free radicals. Antioxidants, they help protect your body against these free radicals. And antioxidants are mostly found in plants. Fiber. Fiber, if you're not eating fiber, if you don't know what fiber is, by the end of this series of programs, you will be a lover of fiber, I hope. Fiber is a type of carbohydrate that cannot be broken down into sugar molecules, and it passes through the body undigested. Fiber helps regulate blood sugar. So if you have diabetes, you want to be eating fiber. It's important in colon and gut health. It can assist in weight management and is important in control of conditions such as diabetes, high cholesterol, and heart disease. Now, before we're gonna bring on our chef here who's gonna talk to us more about herbs and spices, just a little logistics here. I'm gonna put in the chat two forms. One form is going to be a registration form. If you wanna go to that form, you can go to that form and register to receive any of the handouts that we're gonna be giving or any extra additional educational resources that we're going to pro provide. So if you go on there, provide your name and your email address, we can make sure that you get that information. In addition, we want to know how these programs are or are not effective for you. So you can also fill out, please, a feedback or evaluation form at the end of each program so that we can know how we can adjust and make future programs greater and better. And also, if you want to, you can always email me at health at lrcsda.com if you have further suggestions or want additional information. And so now we're going to bring on Chef Miguel. <coughs> Hi, Miguel. How are you? Hello, everyone. Hello, doctor. How are you? Are you fine? Wonderful, wonderful. And so we're excited to learn about herbs and spices today. And we know you're going to do a, a short cooking demonstration for us as well. Yes. And so we're going to go ahead and put up your slides and let you go ahead and give your presentation. Thank you again for being with us today. And as you get started, I would allow you to take a few minutes to just introduce yourself, 
Tell us some of the things that you've been doing so the audience can know a little bit more about you. Okay. My name is Miguel Larche, and I am a, a French chef for, uh, for at least 28 years. Um, and uh, I have been uh, I'm married to my dear wife. She's, uh, she's a, a nurse practitioner. Uh, she's going to be a nurse practitioner soon. And she is really interesting about also about health. And I have two kids. Uh, my son is um, 18. My daughter is um, 16. And they are all in boarding school. So we kind of like empty nest right now. Um, and it's fun. It is fun. And now uh, also I am travel. I love to teach. I love to educate uh, people. I love to be uh, um, travels and uh, many places to uh, train, educate in herb and spicy, but how to cook uh, palatable, healthy food at the same time. Because the food is not only healthy, but you have to be also, when you taste it, you should say, oh man, I want another bite of this food again. I, I, I would love to know how to do it again. And uh, you should not miss the, the, the meat when you eat this kind of food also, uh, because it's so good. Uh, so today we are going to cover um, urban spices. I know this is one of the most important uh, principle and foundation of cooking. You know, um, it is something that um, most people, um, I went all around the world and do not know really how to combine and use uh, those uh, urban spices. So we're going to learn this. You are the lucky ones that are going to learn all those things today. Uh, not everything because it takes uh, take about two, two and a half hours. We're going to do as much as we can in this uh, little uh, amount of time we have, okay? So the first the first thing I would like to ask you, um, what is the difference between, do you like to put the next slide for me? What is the difference between herb and spices? What is the difference between herb and spices? Anybody knows? Herbs is what? It's all about the leaves. Is there somebody uh, people can answer at the same time, uh, doctor? No, you're not going to be able to hear them. Ah, okay. Okay. So herb is what? Herb is everything that's talk about leaf, okay? I want to show you this here. Okay. That's the leaf. The leaf of this is like basil. And that's the uh, anything about herb is the leafy part of the plant. And also uh, rosemary also. The leafy part of the plant, I have some, I am here cilantro, the leafy part of the plant. And here is, uh, I, so I, I won't tell you now, but uh, eventually I will talk to you about it. This is a one herb that is not very, very common and not, uh, most people don't know how to, uh, never use before. So I want to show you these herbs. And it's, I think it's a very, very nice herb to use. Um, it, uh, they use it a lot in India. Um, uh, this herb also okay uh so herb is again about uh herb is the leaf part of the plant and spices is what spices is everything about what everything's um the seeds okay uh let's say the seeds of a this is the seed okay uh also is a pod okay it's imp important to know the different varieties of all spices, okay? Some come in different form and it's therefore different flavors, okay? Um, let me go this one instead. So the next one is the pod. Pod is like, give me some example of pod. Do you, can you tell me some exa example of pod? A pod, a pod is like cardamom pod, okay? This is a, a pod that is, a, a pod is a, usually is a thick envelope and inside there is some seed or a, a nuts inside okay so that is part other place we can find um spices so we talk about seed we talk about pod do, do you have any other place we can find spices the, uh, anybody okay i know you probably guess well and there is also the bark what is it what do you think it is this is cinnamon bark okay and um Cinnamon bark is, is 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 incredible. It's a beautiful tree, and I will show you on the web on the on the side on the slide soon how how a cinnamon tree is. Okay, and the next thing you will find also is what is it? Turmeric or ginger can be is the root part of the of, of the plant also. Okay, so so far we determine we define that. Um, uh, a spice comes in five different places uh, four so far uh, the seeds 
like cumin, coriander, and also uh, the pod, like cardamom or nutmeg, and also we find the root, like uh, the ginger, and the bark, like cinnamon. And there is another place. Uh, the most expensive spice, actually, you will find is what? Saffron. Okay, so the stigma of a flower is called saffron and this is also another place you can find spice so let's repeat it again i'm a teacher so i like to repeat thing again you again so you guys we get it and um it will make sense to you so um so we have the seeds like coriander um um cumin or fennel seeds and we have also um cinnamon the bark we have the ginger the root uh, it, it can be horseradish, it can be turmeric, a, um, and also we have also um, the stigma from the flower called saffron. Okay, I think I didn't. I don't think I forgot something. The pod. I don't know if I mentioned that already. Okay, so those now we define the spices, and also the more herb and spice you put in your food, the less the less salt, the less salt you will need. Okay, so that's very important. If if we um if, if I, I usually when I uh, like let's say example I make a soup for example I will never put salt by the way into my soup because I put all of my spice my herbs then what I would do I put my salt because it will give me a certain amount of flavors and so therefore it will help me to address my salt my salt uh, correspondingly so it's very important to not put salt right after you cook um, also. Uh, what else can I tell you about spice? Let's let's go to the to the PowerPoint uh, quickly. Okay, so let's the next the next the next things. Um, what is the most common uh, seasoning that people use? Do you know? I think I don't know if I mentioned that one. But the most common seasoning is what salt and pepper. So I'm sure that because you signed up for this class, you would like to know more about um other seasoning that's salt and pepper that's the most common seasoning when somebody don't know what to add oh let me put some more salt or let me put some more uh, chicken broth let me put some more um and and that's the pepper and voila hey we we are there and now there is so many other spices god gave us a palette to have all these nuances and flavors and 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 to add and this intricate uh taste and everything so uh we need to use them okay the next slide. Okay, the salt and pepper. This is yeah the most common. The next one. Okay, uh, what is the main purpose of herbs and spices? And it's aroma and taste. It have a it have to be equal balance of both aroma and taste. Otherwise, what will happen if one overpower the others? So the 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 food is is is. Too much like cardamom goes a long way so if you put too much uh or cardamom it will just it will uh, the aroma probably will be great as you cook but the taste will be overpowered okay so aroma and taste um equal what flavor okay flavor and this is what we look when we cook we look for flavor okay but we need to have both aroma and taste okay the next slide Okay, so now let's let's go about uh, the difference of uh, the differences of urban spices. Um, there is um, uh, this is I don't know anybody know about this spice there? What what I know um, when I do live, I let you taste everything actually. So you cannot taste, but I can at least show you. Can you see this? Okay, so this is herb this is this here with what this is spice okay this is a, a spice and it's called cumin cumin is what very uh you have a sweet and pungent taste at the same time uh also how to define a spice how do you find a taste the flavor of a spice is important a, a spice can be pungent remember that it can be sweet okay it can be tangy 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 it can be also what hot and it can be also an amalgamation amalgamation of different spice like curry like uh uh like uh oh, the name uh, 
Yeah, uh, the, the name just escaped me just now. Masala, I say like this, okay? So uh, it's an amalgamation of different spice. But uh, this, this it can be defined as a little pungent and um, of the flavor. Coriander goes a lot with a lot of different spice. So when you use uh, cumin example, sorry, I mean, I mean cumin. Cumin is uh, rich in flavor and uh, you have a, 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 a punginess to it, but a slight punginess, not too strong. And people use it a lot. In Mexico, they love to use cumin for uh, their chili and their beans, everything. Also in the Caribbean, also you will see that. Also, uh, you will find it uh, also in the North Africa, they love to use cumin. And uh, also uh, sour crop in your cabbage, you can put in your cabbage, in your lentil, in your squash. But cumin goes well with coriander. Coriander and cumin is like the perfect partner for uh, for your dish. Okay, so next, let's go to the next slide. Ah, you're missing one picture there, but um, so the coriander, this is coriander, okay? So the coriander seeds is also have like a tanginess. It's, it's tangy to the taste and uh, it's, you have a nice warmth uh, flavor also. And it's, um, it's slightly pungent, but most tangy, okay? And uh, coriander is used a lot with cumin. Whenever you find cumin, you want to use coriander, okay? There are two spices that uh, goes well, very well together, okay? Um, Coriander usually goes well with all spice. So you can combine with all spice. You can combine with cinnamon together, and you can combine coriander with also fennel and ginger. Okay. So, and remember, whenever you use a spice, it does also goes well for your health. Like example, coriander will reduce, um, help to regulate your blood pressure, something like that. Okay. Or uh, improve your digestive system. So when you put a little coriander into your beans, it will help your flatulence, your gas, and it will help your digestive system as because you help your digestive system, okay? So coriander is, uh, how many of you use coriander before? I'm sure part of you, I love to put, when I use coriander, I like to make it put in my cabbage, I like to put it in my squash, and I like to put it in uh, anything, uh, um, for my soup example okay so coriander and cumin goes well together so don't be afraid in your salsa and your beans and legumes uh, to use coriander and eventually through those classes that we're going to have i will show you i will i will show you how to use those those um those spices uh, um in an extensive way so you will learn how to utilize them and not be afraid of them okay so the next the next spice next slide the next spice is uh, fennel seed. How many of you use fennel seed? Fennel seed becoming my favorite, my favorite uh, spice. I I love to use it for some reason. I just have a, a a heart for fennel seed lately. Let me show you that. Okay, so this is fennel seeds. Uh, it have like a. Fennel seed. So fennel seed, you will see it also in uh, the Indian cuisine. They use a lot of fennel seed for their masala. Okay, uh, this is very important uh, uh, for their masala. Also, fennel seed is a uh, is uh, I love to put fennel seed for my rice. When I do rice, you sh you should try, guys. You should try uh, just a little bit of fennel seed. It goes a long way. I always put like a like a quarter of a teaspoon for about a cup of rice. And you just let it uh, cook with the rice, and you will just have a different flavor, and it's beautiful. It's so sweet because coriander seed is like a like a anise licorice taste, and so it's sweet. Okay, and so, and I like to use it uh, also for um, because it's sweet. I like to put it in my butternut squash soup, my sweet potatoes. Put a little bit of fen uh, fennel seed also there, and um, also I love to use fennel seed for. Uh, for uh, anything with curry, from uh, potato masala or something like this. And it's also, when you go to an Indian restaurant, sometimes you see candy fennel seed on the side. And so it's it's uh, just as a, uh, it's a breath freshener at the same time. Um, fennel seed also will improve your digestive system 
and also what we do also um uh, for the for the ladies that is uh, pregnant it, it, it increase the lactations uh, of uh, for the milk and also purified your blood do you know fennel seed improve your skin appearances so more fennel seed and beautiful skin you will have uh, i i yeah you should try you never know okay <laughs> okay the next slide okay fenugreek fenugreek is uh it's been used in india in egypt ethiopia this is a seed that is not very common in North America and many places in, in, in the world besides India and Egypt and Ethiopia. Uh, it is a, uh, it's, you have a tangy taste. It's kind of like a piece of stone, like when you try to uh, bite to it. But as soon as you put it into water, it dissolves. It dissolves very fast. So uh, fenugreek is a uh, uh, Chapati, example. I love to make chapati, and one day you will learn how to make this. Chapati is 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 great for fen, uh, in in uh, fenos, fenugreek is great with chapati. And let me show you this on the camera quickly. And this is what you will see. Okay, so this is fenugreek, and uh, of course in in India in those places you will you use it a lot for lamb and and beef, something like this uh, in Egypt, but mostly. Um, uh, but when I make my curry, I have to put fenugreek into this. Fenugreek is like the backbone of my curry. It just bring a, another dimension of flavors that uh, others um, that if I do not put it, I will know it's lacking of it. Okay. So uh, and uh, in Egypt and Ethiopia, they love to use it. Also, Ethiopia, they love to use it for bread and uh, for uh, and for their fish, thing like this. But it's really great. Uh, for tofu, for vegetables, to mine it, uh, but uh, the most likely use is for curry, okay? And um, it goes well with cardamom, it goes well with cinnamon, it goes well with cumin, it goes well with fennel, it goes well with uh, turmeric, okay? And uh, believe it or not, but it's, it helps to ease the uh, the painful menstrual cramps in, in, in ladies, okay? And also, it, it will boost it boosts uh, your breast milk also, and uh, yeah, uh, fenugreek is is uh, and I know some places in India they use fenugreek tea, so um, it's something also they also spot fenugreek. Okay, it just beautiful spotting also. Okay, so the next slide. Okay, calamon. Do you see the flower on the calamon there? This is beautiful flower there. So calamon is a uh, uh, it's one of the spices that you is 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 yes, it's sweet, it's lemony, flowery, and uh, uh, but at the same time, is uh, too much of it will overpower your dish very fast. Um, and you most of the places you will find it is in India in the Middle East, uh, Scandinavian use it most in Germany, uh, use it mostly for the pastries. But in India, they will use cardamom, and uh, in the Middle East, especially, they use it for tea. But in India, they use it for the masala and for the curry also, and also sometimes for tea. But uh, the Middle East is mostly for tea. Okay, and uh, let me show you the cardamom. Cardamom goes well with uh, caraway, cinnamon, clove, coriander, cumin, and saffron. And I know some of you might be like, wow, this is a lot of information, but... Uh, it's just to give you an overview at the same time what is out there and also like uh, the to show you that wow you, we don't have to limit limit ourselves with uh, just few flavors uh, we can go so many places so many countries yet being in our home okay uh, you don't have to travel uh, overseas so you can make it there and uh, I, I will teach you how to do this and it will be healthy and really palatable also okay i will show you the um uh, this um i want to show you the calamon first let me show you the calamon okay so this is calamon and I, i'm going to open one to show you inside of it um there is beautiful seed and if you do cook it when i cook it the calamon most of the time i take the powder it's a lot of work but you can find it also in in the form of uh powder or on in the form of seed but let me open one of them for you so you can see okay and something to um 
before I go further, I want to ask you this question also. What is the difference between dry spice, uh, a ground spice, I mean ground spice, and whole spice? The difference is one will is fresher than the others, okay? So this is the cardamom seed that you see there, okay? Uh, yeah, let me go a little down. Yeah, okay? And the flavor, let me, the flavor is, is, is just incredible. Mm. Wow, it's something to experience. If you haven't never tried calamon, I would highly recommend you to uh, to buy some and just open it like I just did and just give it a smell. Ah, this is incredible. I can't I can't stop smelling this thing. It's just it's just good. Mm, man, I want to cook. Ah, this is incredible. So calamon, I love to use calamon. You know what I love to use calamon for? Is uh my uh, coconut lime oatmeal. One day you will learn how to do this, okay? It's like, it's the best oatmeal you ever have. It's like a dessert and at the same time it's breakfast, you know? And you put some common in this and a pudding or uh, like, uh, you can do like also, um, I like to put in my Thai food and curry and everything also. But in pastries, it's just incredible in pastries. And common actually common have a, um, this incredible things for um for your health also do you know that is um also protect me protect against me protect against chronic disease also calamon have uh, they usually use a lot for tea um but yes um this is one herb one spice that i love to use also especially when i do a button of squash soup uh with some leeks and celery and i put some calamon and ginger and you have a soup and a little bit of coconut milk i tell you this is this is like out of this world. Uh, so calamon is one, one spice that most, uh, I think most people need to learn how to make this, this spice, okay? Uh, how to use this spice. Okay, the next slide. Okay, saffron, saffron is just like, do you know, before I keep going, did I show, tell you the difference between spice, um, ground spice and whole spice? I think I forgot. Okay, um, ground spice, it would take about, three months before after three to six months your spice your ground spice the oil will will be gone from your spice that's been the flavor we disintegrate it will it will degrade in flavor okay so therefore i would highly recommend and keep it from from the light also from the heat many times i know many times our um uh, our spice is above our stove but it's best to put it in a, in a place where there is no heat and no light and uh, if ground spices last more than three to four months, I think you should consider it to uh, consider to put it into the trash. The flavor is gone, and it's, it's sad, isn't it? I'm, I know it's sad, and uh, but it's, it's, if you want to experience great meal, I think this is and buy buy whole whole spice example. The whole spice I will show you what the secret of a chef, and I will cook it for you uh, later on. Show you what. Uh, to do in order to increase 95% the flavor of your spice. If you do not do this, you will lose. It's like buying your spice so expensive and and uh, and lost 90% of your money into 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 nothing. Yeah. So therefore, you um, from now on, I hope you will use this technique that I will show you later on and how to use your spice in a way that will increase the flavor of your spice and make it. Uh, a, a, a wonderful experience for you. Um, yes, and the difference between herb, dry herb, and, and 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 fresh herbs is also the same. Dry herbs is best to use dry herbs uh, in in dry herb is place to to use. But fresh herbs, when you use fresh herb, there is places for fresh herbs that you need to use um, um, more into. Uh, yes. Okay. The fresh herb is is best to use fresh herbs. Uh, for uh, in the beginning or after or in the end of your cuisine, it's most of the fresh herb need to be used at the end, uh, like basil, um, cilantro, uh, mint, um, tarragons are herbs that is the mint family. They call it the mint family because they evaporate and very fast also into your food. So therefore, you do not want to put it in the beginning. 
So you want to put like five to 10 minutes. Let's say you make a tomato sauce. It usually takes 30 minutes to make a nice tomato sauce. So you put it like 10 minutes to fresh up before you uh, the end of your cooking. But let's say you want to use uh, rosemary, bay leaves, sage, thyme. Those ones are kind of woody and pungent flavor. So therefore it's best to use them at the end, at the beginning of your cooking. Let's say you make again tomato sauce. You want to put your rosemary as as soon as you start to simmer your tomato sauce as your rosemary in it and your and your bay leaves seen like this so therefore the flavor will last and we give uh it will embody your soup uh, your sauce and it will be a great great experience for you while you're eating it okay so let's uh let's talk about saffron saffron is the most expensive herbs in the world with uh also uh i would say vanilla also vanilla was not as expensive but there is a shortage Vanilla, there is back crops from year after year making vanilla very expensive. Sri Lanka doesn't do as much vanilla anymore. So now, um, saffron, you know, do you know that you take about five pounds of uh, the steam out of um, actually 80,000 80, roses? And I have a picture at, at next time I will show it to you. And those, those ladies, uh, it's a back breaking work they had to kneel there and take all the stigma from the saffron you cannot do it mechanically you have to do it uh you, you have to do it by hand so therefore that's why it takes so much time uh to um to harvest the saffrons from the stigma of the flower and it takes about five pounds of the stigma to make one pound of saffron after roasted so it takes eighty thousand pound of uh Eighty thousand roses that make five pounds of the saffron of uh, the saffron itself, the stigma itself. But after it goes through the process of roasting, it will take it will give only one pound. So that's why it's so expensive the saffron. But saffron is like it's one of my favorite subtle flavor. You have a floral, sweet, honey taste, and uh, and you find it in Spain. Spain uses it a lot. This is the number one, as I believe, in in for saffron. They use it for the national dish. Uh, uh, how many of you know this national dish of saf uh, uh, where saffron is made? Paella. Paella is a, it's an incredible dish. If you haven't tried, I know they do paella with seafood, but uh, we can make a, a nice vegan paella with our dish, and it's incredible flavor. Too much saffron, we take like medication. So saffron have a we have to learn how to dose those uh, the right doses of saffron. And uh, Sweden and France, we use it a lot. Uh, for custard, I use uh, for my for my custard. I love to use saffron sometimes, and uh, for different uh, dessert also. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Okay, this is nutmeg. Nutmeg. Um, let me show you. Nutmeg is um. Uh, uh, let me first is uh, have a warm and and sweet um, flavor. But also, it's uh, it's imported. It's as you find the country I use it a lot is Europe, from Sweden, from from Italy, from Germany, from uh, Norway. Europe is the number one I believe that use the most the most uh, nutmeg um, because they for the custard from their pastry sauce from their dessert for for anything like this uh, nutmeg is being used. Uh, let me show you quickly. Um, one nutmeg here. So this is one spice. I have two spice. Just like coriander. Coriander. Do you know coriander come from cilantro? Cilantro is a herb, and coriander is a spice. And but this one has two spice itself. Okay. Nutmeg. What is the top of the nutmeg? It comes some many time with. Um, this one is drier. So this is what before it get to dry. This is what you get. Okay. So that's the nutmeg itself. And inside the nutmeg, you find what? On top of the nutmeg, this is called mace. That's another spice. This is one, the only spice in my, um, as far that I know, that I have two spices, okay? So uh, the mace, and inside this is a pot. So you have to break it. I'm going to show you quickly how to break this, okay? And you open this, and what you see, look at this. You see, nutmeg. Do you have a grater here? Yes, yes. I have. I want to. I want to grate some of the nutmeg for you. This is. I do not buy garnet meg anymore. I buy this. This. I be. I don't believe garnet meg. Um, really, really define what is uh, nutmeg is. And uh, so, I want to just grate a little bit. 
Oh man, man, it's it's like it smell like it's like you're going back to Christmas, you're going back to the holidays. Ah, uh, the smell is just like fantastic. You will never have such smell with a garnet mag. You will never have you fresh nut mag. Uh, grated is goes a long way. Also, my wife likes to use it for oatmeal. Also, I love to use it for oatmeal. I put some lime. I put some nutmeg. Some cardamom. I tell you, and uh, in a banana smoothie. Oh, I wish you had to make this. Uh, my best banana smoothie in the world. And you will love how to make. Uh, you will love banana smoothie if you never try oatmeal. Those who hate oatmeal, let, give me a chance and you will love it. Nutmeg goes a lot because they have like a, a sweet warm taste. So I love to use it for my um, for uh, sweet potatoes, for pie, for um, for things like this. And also it goes well actually. Nutmeg goes well with cinnamon. Goes well with all those things uh, that uh, are sweet. Like uh, butternut squash, sweet potatoes, like I said, and also uh, and also pastries, pumpkin, um, your cabbage, your quiche, anything with like a a, a a sauce, like a white sauce, like a bechamel, something like this. Nutmeg goes well with it also. Um, the benefits of nutmeg is really uh, pain is is soothed your digestive system and and also uh, uh, it's a detoxify of of the body also. And uh, and uh, increase your immune system also nutmeg. I love to use nutmeg for those things, especially when the holidays come. Nutmeg, here I am. <laughs> Next slide, please. Okay, so we have cinnamon. Do you see how the cinnamon grows, guys? In the back, this is what God is incredible. God is God is fantastic. Do you, a cinnamon bark? How many times you if? When you're a kid and you try to peel a, a bark of a tree, your father or parents say, do not peel the bark of a tree, you will kill the tree. And this cinnamon bark tree, cinnamon tree, you can peel the bark as much as you want. It's a self-healing. It will regenerate itself. It will not die. So um, this, it comes from uh, the bark. And uh, one day I was walking, I'm from the Caribbean, I'm from Martinique. And I'm French, by the way. Um, you probably understand that by now. <laughs> and so one day I was working and uh in uh let me see something. Yeah, what I was hold on. Yeah, one day I was walking in um uh, in the forest in the Caribbean in Martinique, and we discovered a beautiful cinnamon tree. It was smelling incredible. The smell far away, and I I that was my first time uh, um meeting a cinnamon tree, and I Say what is that saying? And I'll pen it, and I, I couldn't believe the flavor, the smell. And it was it, the whole place was filled of aroma of now sweet, fair sweet. The leaves, everything. It was just an awesome experience. So cinnamon, cinnamon also, yeah, ground cinnamon. This is one thing you can probably use as much as is is not like six seven months old. Um, because every time you buy something fresh, uh, ground, you need to look vibrant also at the same time. So the same thing for the cinnamon. Um, this is this is a bark that I have. I found this bark. Uh, it's from straight from the Caribbean, um, and uh, it's also there is the, the one that you can mostly find in store. They are like a kind of. Um, uh, roll on in itself, and those one have great also great flavors. But I I, I do believe the Caribbean spice, the Caribbean um, cinnamon is is way better. When you grate this thing, just man, this is like a, I can see pudding. I can see uh, my oatmeal still. <laughs> yes, we we'll put that also. I can see like a, um, my pie, my um, my pumpkin pie, a sweet potato pie, or Thing like this, and and uh, and I love to put it for my curry also. Cinnamon is like just perfect. I make a korma not long ago. I just make a korma. It's an Indian dish, and cinnamon is just the one that brings the flavor together. So um, cinnamon goes a long way. So uh, you have great flavor also. I want to um, mention also for cinnamon, it goes on, on uh, the Moroccan couscous. I don't know if you ever try Moroccan couscous in your life, but uh, this is something that. Uh, uh, in Morocco, they use a lot. In North Africa, they use a lot of uh, um, and, and cinnamon also. 
Um, it goes well with coriander, it goes well with cumin, it goes well with ginger, with nutmeg, and uh, it's actually lower your blood sugar. Cinnamon can lower your blood sugar and uh, also uh, reduce inflammation also, okay? So uh, the next slide. Next slide. Ah, oh, that's, ah, oh, sorry, we are there. <laughs> okay, the next slide is, um, what, what do you think it is, guys? Anybody knows? Star anise, okay? Star anise is uh, mostly used, star anise is not common. It's not something that uh, people use uh, everywhere. Uh, you don't see it out of country. It's China and Vietnam. In Vietnam, it's Vietnamese places, they use it a lot for uh, their food, okay? Uh, that's one of the main ingredients for their food, uh, star anise also. One is, uh, in China, they use it uh, for their teas like this. In India, they use it um, not really for their meal. Some some meal have it, uh, but for also for tea. Um, you have a licorice, um, a licorice taste and also like a sweet, but a tanniness of pungent. The pungent come from because of the, because of the, sh let me change the camera because of the woody part. Otherwise, it will not be as pungent. If it's the, the seed itself, the seed is really uh, shiny. Can you see? It's like a, it have a shininess to it. It's like it's hollow. And when you press it, it just breaks like a, a piece of glass. Okay? Uh, that's, that's uh, uh, I'll just break one for you guys. I need to see if we can see. It's kind of tiny there, but uh, let's see. Maybe I can zoom it a little bit. Let's see. I don't know if I should try this now. Okay. Okay. You see, you did hear the sound there. It just, it just cracked like it's a hollow sound, and uh, it's just like this. Okay. Just beautiful seed. Just beautiful seed like that. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Star anise. Okay. When apple cider. Yes. Uh, nice apple cider for Thanksgiving. Uh, star anise goes well with it. Also, um, uh, the place I would love, I love to use taranis is uh, for uh, uh, pumpkin, for dessert, for apples, um, thing like this. And it goes well with lemongrass. Lemongrass is uh, one. The next time I will show you lemongrass. Uh, also, it goes well with coriander, with fennel seed because they are sweet. Anything that is sweet, a little slightly pungent goes well with uh, star anise. I don't know if you ever use star anise other places, but you can use it also for uh, for your jam, thing like this also, okay? And uh, I love to use it, especially I love to use it when I, I make uh, my uh, my soups and also some of my apple cider, uh, my apple cider also. I don't use it too often. Um, but it's a, it's a spice that uh, deserves our attention also. Okay, the next slide. Okay, um, this one is, a, is a, <laughs> I don't know how to call it, a spice and a herbs. I mentioned that to you because I say uh, anything herbs, anything that is uh, leafy is a herbs. But yet they call it what? A curry leaves okay curry leaves you have like a, a warm pleasant uh limony a little bit uh, bitter in taste but uh it smell it smell really really um warm it smell like it's you have a flowery taste but at the same time it's um uh, you have a uh hmm, the lemony a little bit slightly bitter but um it's a great it's a great uh, uh in india they use it a lot in south africa because south africa have a lot of influence indian influence in south africa so therefore they have the same the same kind of dish also so in india they use it a lot for their their korma for the curry that's mostly they use it for and uh for their feet for their lambs and like this but um this is a a, a nice variation for your curry um I love, it's, it's like when when i make curry sometimes i use it not all the time i like to use also lime leaves also and so when I, there is also the subtlety and people wonder what is it exactly what do you put in it it's just another level of of flavors uh to add into your curry so it's not the same boring curry you can change with different herbs different spices also okay uh let's go to let's go to let me see if i have some um 
Um, it's a good, powerful antioxidant also. And also it is used, you can use it with cardamom, we can use it with chili, with cilantro, with coconut milk is perfect with coconut milk. Uh, it's or I love to use it for my lentils. Yeah, I forgot that. I love to use it for my lentils. I love to use it for uh, uh for uh, also my chickpea when I make a chickpea curry or lentils. I love to use it, and it goes well with any vegetables. Okay, uh, the next slide. The next slide. Okay, so this one is ginger. Most most people use the ground ginger, but why don't we use why don't why don't why will we not try this this awesome ginger here? Uh, let me see. Let me change this. Yeah, I'm um, here. Yes, uh, ginger is uh, is also. Can I go back to the slide? Go back to the slide for one second. Ginger is also. Um, it's like a, a have a citrus, a tangy, uh, and also it's kind of hot to the taste. Also. Um, if you taste it just straight like this, yeah, for sure it will burn, burn you a little bit. And I like to sometimes I'm I'm like uh, I'm crazy like this. And uh, many times uh, before I go to bed or in the morning, I will take some ginger. It's like it's like a give you an energy boost, but at the same time it it helps your immune system. So I like to make sure my system is always uh, in good shape. So from time to time I will take a little of ginger and I will peel it. And then I will I will just uh, just use it like this actually. Just like mm. <laughs> it's hot, but you go for it. It's tangy. Oh, you can taste all the sweet. This is excellent. Uh, it's um, I love to use, uh, in China in Japan. You guys know that they use a lot of ginger um, for the cabbage, for the green sauce, for the marinade. So this is what ginger is used mostly, and uh, and also uh, for the curry. I like to make a uh, deep uh, sauce sauce that will also bring ginger uh, benefits of ginger. It's like a, uh, when I make my kimchi, I like to put ginger in my kimchi. When I make uh, my soup, my sauce, uh, I put some ginger in it. Not long ago, I make a potato leek soup. The potato leek soups, I put some ginger and I put also some chili. I tell you, people came back. It was for pork rock uh, uh, this, uh, yesterday. Uh, yesterday. Uh, people came back again and again. And before I came to try it, it was gone. Okay. So um, ginger with potato leek is soup is incredible. This is uh, something I wanted to try for the first time and it worked well. Um, this is something... I do not be afraid to use ginger different places. Um, it goes well with uh, also uh, uh, turmeric, um, with tamarind. It goes well together with it. With coconut milk also, uh, and basil and cilantro goes well with ginger. And uh, lemongrass with mint with scallion. It goes well with it. Okay, so ginger with cabbage with soup with vegetables with curry with tofu is just it's just incredible dish. To uh, uh, spice to use, okay. So this is um, one thing, uh, one trick for ginger. I just want to show you quickly. Let me show you this. One trick for ginger. Well, I, I I need a smaller knife. I forgot to bring it there, but it's best. My knife is very sharp, so I must cut myself there. Okay, so with a paring knife, is is the best way to peel ginger is to grate it. Okay, with a paring knife, it'll be better. But I go like this, okay? So we take the skin off, and then you can use it. Or you can just slice very slightly or take a peeler, but the peeler is awkward with the peeler sometimes because it's, um, the pieces is all deformed, so it's hard to use. So it's best to grate it. And also or with a knife, just carefully do that, okay? And you have your all ginger peel, okay? So now, the next, the next, the next slide. If we have another slide, I don't know. That's it. Okay, that's it for you. That's it for the slide. Okay, so now I would like to demonstrate something very important for you. Um, let me take everything out there. It is very important to to know how to use those spice. So today uh, it's not really cooking, but it's a demonstration how to uh, increase the potential. Uh, flavor of your spice okay 
you want to use at least 100% or 90% uh, of your spice flavor. So therefore, you want to make sure that uh, whatever you do, it will increase the flavor of your spice. Otherwise, why you use spice? So this is what we do professional in, uh, in our kitchen, professional in our kitchen. So I want to show you something very important. So I have like a mortar. This is not uh, necessary to have, but I will use it uh, for... So yeah, I eat, I eat the ginger and uh, it's going through. <laughs> so I, I use this, this mortar. Uh, so we can find different kinds. I have one here. I have one here uh, in just like that. And also on a wood, wood form. Okay. So I like the wood form for some reason. I think because it's maybe some charm in it. I don't know. So it's, yeah. Anyway. So I'm going to... Um, First, you want to put your skillet. Let me go give you, let me just do this a little bit. Okay, so you can see. Okay. I'm going to put the skillet on here. You want to have a hot skillet first, and then what we're going to use, I'm going to use all the spice, most of the spice that I show you today, okay? So let's see. I'm going to put some into the skillet, some cardamom. Little bit of cardamom. The heat. I can hear you. Can you switch the camera so we can see? We can't see. Okay, yes. Okay, yes. Oh, oh so, sorry. <laughs> this is the camera. Thank you. Okay. Let me put this a little bit. Okay, so. Okay, so now we're going to use some calamon, the calamon here. Then after this, I'm going to put some cumin. I just put on a cutting board right now for you guys so you can see what I'm doing before I put in the skillet. A little bit of cumin. I put coriander. I wish you can smell the spices right now. It smells like you're going to uh, a farmer's market in India or uh, in South Africa. And so all those, those beautiful spices to get a line up there. Um, even in the south of France, in the south of France, we have a lot of Middle Eastern or Indian places. And so they, they line up those spices just before uh, in their store. All kind. Of, you see the first picture on your PowerPoint? Uh, that's that's the way they line up the spices. And you just come and scoop how much spice you want. It's incredible. Um, also, I'm going to put some fenugreek. Okay, a little bit of fenugreek. And uh, I forgot to show you clove, but clove, you know, all guys know about cloves. I didn't want to try to taste it. Uh, okay, so some clove there. And that's it for now. I just put this. Now, my skillet is hot, okay? The skillet is very hot. And now I'm going to add all the spices into my skillet, okay? Just like that. And this is very important now. I know many ladies are multitasking, multitasking. So this is one thing you don't want to be multitasking. You want to stay focused on your on your spices because when it burns, it burns fast, okay? And you don't try to save it. Just you have to do it again, okay? So what I want to do, I want to uh, put in the skillet until um, the flavor, the aroma, start, uh, the fragrance of the flavor start to develop, okay? So I, I'm going to, to, it going to smell like, nice and nice and uh, uh invade the whole place now i can smell it it smells incredible okay and you want to stir it from time to time yeah okay so this is what you get okay you don't want to go for more than this see okay now i'm going to put it everything into into my mortar, and then I'm going to crush this thing there. And it's not necessary to crush it, uh, but when you crush it, you have to use it right away, okay? You have to put it, if you leave it 30 minutes after you come back, the flavor is gone, okay? So you need to put it, as soon as you crush it, you need to put it in your, in, your, uh, in your preparations, whatever you plan to do. Otherwise, you don't have to crush it, you can put it straight 
into into your preparation. Okay, there is something very important. Let's say you make a soup. So instead, if let's first let's talk about onions and celery and carrots. Okay, so you saute some onions, and you're going to add some some. Maybe may I have some uh, olive oil, please, on uh, the squeeze. So I want I want to show you something quickly. But first, let me show you this here. Okay, so you stir this thing nicely. Ah, oh, the flavor. Ah, oh, this flavor is out of this world. So I can I can smell everything. Like while before I could smell like ten percent, but now I toasted everything. It really is all the 95 percent of the flavor or the spice the oil develop and increase increase the 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 flavor or the spice by just tossing it and it's incredible i'll show you on the camera quickly this is what you got and i told you the smell is incredible it is 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 just perfect yes okay so now this is one one way to do it uh dry heat now, if if you want to use, um, if we do not really want to use a mortar or uh, go to this process, it's okay to not go to this process. I'll show you the other way to do it. Okay. So this for this you will need. Uh, let's say you you, you want to saute some onions and then put. So you want to saute the onions and then you want to put it into a. Uh, let's say a, a to, let's go back to tomato sauce, a tomato sauce or whatever. Okay. Or uh, so. Okay, so you want first to dice your onions. Okay, just like that. So you slice it this way and like that. Okay. Then you want to do dice. Okay. Okay, so we have your, our onions ready. Now I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil into the skillet, just just a little bit, just like that. And then I'm going to saute my onions. You see here the sound, beautiful. Okay. Then I'm going to, and this is the time you want to put your spices okay so when the onion is tender enough you, you wait for the onions to be a little bit tender then you put your spice okay so the spice that i'm going to use i just put some cumin and some coriander just for an example okay okay so and it will still increase for 90 percent of your flavor of the spice will be increased okay so so, but let's say you, you have a soup. What can I do? I just have a soup and I have just water, vegetable, and everything in my soup. Do the same thing. Saute the, you can saute in, in the skillet first and then put it in your soup. Any liquid will be uh, placed after, okay? You don't want to put any liquid uh, before you uh, you actually toast your spices because it will it will defeat the purpose of uh, to release the flavor of your spice, okay? So you want to make sure you always in contact with heat or oil before uh, you put your spice into a uh, into a liquid form okay so you always want to do that first then it's ready to do whatever now if i want to put my tomato sauce in it if i want to put everything in my liquid i'm ready for it that makes sense yeah so this is uh the secret of the way and you see that in indian cuisine they are one of the most advanced in using spices in indian uh, cuisine so uh and uh, this is i've been doing it for years and years and this is the way we we chef we love to use um uh, beef, our spice before we add it into any 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 cuisine any cooking any any of any form okay um if you have any questions it's time for you to you feel free to ask any question otherwise we are done for this demonstration today Thank you, Miguel, for that. I do have a few questions, yes. um, and we appreciate everyone who's joined in today. And uh, this is our first um, live cooking show uh, as a part of this series. So um, we're thankful for being able to be here and provide this education. Don't forget to register 
so that you can get the handout that has been prepared that will provide you more of the information about the herbs and spices. So please register so that we can send you that handout. My question is, is that um, where is the best place to get to buy herbs and spices and how's the best way to store them? Okay. The best place to find, uh, sometimes I go to Amazon um, uh, online to find my spices, but also there is many little store like Indian store, Asian stores. This is what I like, or Middle Eastern store. I like to go to those, these places to buy my spices. Uh, and and because I also, it's, it's, it also seems like they have a good um, um, customer customer um, base. So the spice doesn't last long. And it's, like, it's, it's when you go there, you just smell fresh every time. So that's where I like to buy it. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, the next, the next, what is the next? Uh, to store it, um, I like to put those in a jar. You see a tight container like this one. It's small. You don't want, uh, for those who do a, a business, you want a bigger jar. But for a home, something like this, and it will last for about four years, the spice. The whole spice will last four years into your cupboard, okay? Uh, ground spice will last about three to four months. I will not go six months. Some places it's six months, but I go four months, okay? This so is the, the best whole way. spice lasts a few years, but the ground spice, yeah. we should be getting rid of those after a few months. Yes, three to maximum five months. And but uh, the whole spice will last at least four to five years. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, any other tools or information you would like to provide for us? And then also tell us what's going to be coming up in our next cooking show yes okay uh one thing it'd be it'd be excellent a doctor and me were talking about it'd be excellent that if you guys uh, buy those things in advance we give you the recipe in advance so you can uh you can also uh follow me step by step as we go together and cook together i think it'd be fun i think we'll have a wonderful experience together and of course it'd be because live you can mess messed up it's okay to mess up and to do it again it's like it's a journey so don't be ex don't expect you to be a professional in two or three days so it's a journey and, and we understand that so we that's why we want to teach you and to empower you uh give you foundations good techniques and uh and so you can you can feel free and happy in the kitchen and have an enjoyable experience we learn also nice skill nice skill is something very important to learn because nice skill give you like abilities to go a little faster and also give you a uh, uh, enjoyment to cut thing. You will see yourself. Oh, I want to cut this guy. I want to. You will want to cut everything after that. Nice skill is so vital for good experience in the kitchen. Okay. Um, and the next, the next thing will be all about uh, legumes. So, so we're going to learn about different uh, source of legumes. Like we use lentils. We use. Uh, 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 black beans, we use uh, uh, garbanzo probably, and uh, so we we'll learn how to use different flavors for all those three kind of lent uh, beans, okay, legumes. So we, uh, lentils, well, I don't know where we go, but we go India or, or, or uh, black beans, Cuban style, and, and chickpea like Asian style. I don't know. So this is what we're going to learn next time, and we will encourage you to. Buy them in advance. We send you the recipes and and take a chance. Have fun with us in the kitchen. Okay, welcome to my kitchen, by the way. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. You know that's that's gonna be a good program. So if you enjoyed it today and come back next time, each time we do this is gonna get better. Yes. We do have a few more questions, but in talking about our next program, talking about legumes, legumes, we're gonna be talking about the health benefits of legumes. And that we're going to be talking about fiber. And there are so many health benefits of legumes. It is beneficial for the prevention and management of a lot of diseases. Mm -hmm. So really come, because I know a lot of people eat beans, uh, which are part of the legume family, and lentils. But a lot of times we're flavoring them yeah. with animal foods yeah. and animal fats. And so we're going to show you again, using these herbs and spices in our next program, how you can have flavorful legumes that you're going to love and you will not miss that animal fat yes. because they're going to be so flavorful. So yes. make sure you join us again. Our next program is going to be April 2nd. Um, and also too, as Miguel mentioned, make sure you register because we are going to be sending out 
in advance. And typically it will be attached to the announcement for the program. So when you go to the Lake Region Conference YouTube page, you will see in the description of the program for our next program, there's going to be a few links. One will be the registration link, one will be the evaluation link, and one will be a link to forms that will include recipes. So make sure that you check those at least a few days in advance of our next program so that you will have the recipes that we'll be cooking so that you can follow along and cook them in your own home with your own herbs and spices and your own foods. So another question we have is, um, how do you tell or choose fresh ginger root and how long should you keep it? Okay, ginger root is, uh, you can, Okay, you need to be firm to the to the taste. Okay, uh, to the touch. Let let me show you something. Okay, it's, it should be firm. Any any softness there, like here, um, some part is is soft like this one. You don't want to have a ginger mushy like this and soft like this. You want to have the whole ginger, the whole ginger very firm to the uh, the touch. Okay, and uh, some some many time it's open one side. It's okay if it's open, um, but make sure it's it's a bright bright uh, uh bright color also and uh, also the way to uh what is the next question the, the other questions how to uh, how do you store it okay how to store it uh you can leave it outside for uh, a week or two it's fine outside but uh I, I like to put it in a plastic bag and a ziploc bag and tight or uh um tupperware container and just put it inside and it will last for a long time but make sure it's, it's dry well. Make sure we no more moisture before you do that. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, Miguel, anything else before we, we let people go? Anything else that you want to add? I know this was wonderful. We learned a lot today about our herbs and spices. And now we're going to, as we move forward, now we're going to use these herbs and spices as we cook foods. And remember, this is a year long. So we're going to be going through a lot of different cuisines, helping us to learn how to eat healthier, but how to eat healthier and make our foods taste flavorful, have those nice aromas. So when people walk into our homes, yes. the food is inviting because yes. it smells so good. Yes. And Any I, other tips you want to give us today before we end? Yes. It's, um, I want to add something about the spice itself. Spice in itself is not hot, okay? It's unless if you put like something like called <laughs> something like called chili, you know. So then, then, then it be it be it be hot, okay? So that's that's the things. Uh, many people say, yeah, my, "It's too spicy." I say, "What do you mean? Is it too hot or too much cumin?" <laughs> I just want to know. And so, so spice in itself is not hot unless you put an element you need to make it hot, like pepper and all those things. So. Um, don't think because you put all those things that you'll be like overpowering. We, we will help you to make it balanced. At the same time, the flavor that you intended to have in your spice is there. Okay. And um, so, yeah, that's, that's, and also if you, like, swing is coming, uh, summer is coming, you're going to have a lot of basil in your garden. You're going to have all, how to dry your things. You see the first slide that I, I have, the first, first slide, you see the, the, uh, the, basil the rosemary is upside down this is what you want the way you want to dry your herbs and store it for the winter and also also if you have too much basil because nature the lord get just multiply when you 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 plant things you basil or any herbs you can't just blend it in olive oil or water and put it in the ice cube ice cube and freeze it so whenever you need uh any uh some basil, you can just take one ice cube basil and put it in your sauce. <laughs> and that's it. And uh, it will last for a long time. This is what the way we do it a lot in the kitchen also. Okay. So did you say put it, put the basil yes. in some olive oil, put it in the ice cube tray. Yes, blend it first. It? Yeah, blend it, blend it first. And then after putting the ice cubes and freeze it. Yeah. And whenever you need any, any ice cube basil or rosemary, whatever you have, you can just put in your sauce, okay? Anything you do, yeah. And so, would you do that with just like, is it just the basil and the rosemary that are yeah. the ones you with can, the roots? Yeah, you can do it for with any herbs uh, because those this 
let's face it, during the winter, these herbs is so hard to find. They are so expensive in the store, like four dollars for a little few leaves. So, but if you do that in advance and freeze any herbs that you know that you won't find in the winter, just do it, and uh, and you will find uh, you will find it's a lifesaver and money saver also. Uh, for for uh, for my spices, uh, next time, sometime during the process, I will teach you how to make flavorful uh, oil flavors. Okay. So how to infuse your oil, olive oil. Um, so you can just put a little bit and bring a lot of flavors or uh, some smart balance like this, how to flavor it also. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Sounds exciting for yes. the things that are coming <laughs> up ahead for us. So again, we thank you, Chef Miguel, yes. for, for being with us today, for all the information that you provided. Again, this is what we're going to be doing on a monthly basis. We're going to be providing some foundational education. We're going to be doing some cooking and showing you guys how to cook. And hopefully maybe towards the end, we can all come together that would be excellent. in some way yes. so that we can do this actually in yes, person. Right. So yes. but for now, we're going to do it virtually so that, again, yeah. you can share this link with someone else so that they can sit and learn about how to use their herbs and spices. I know I learned a lot today. And I'm going to use my herbs a little bit differently. I'm going to buy them at different places and I'm going to store them differently yeah. than how I've been storing them. And so go back, watch this over again. Again, share it with your family, your friends and your neighbors. And we really look forward to having you at our next program. And so, Miguel, I'm just going to ask you that as we end, if you would just say a prayer for yes. us and our audience. And for all those who are going to go out and be mini chefs and start yes. getting new herbs and spices. Take your heart with and, you, the chef heart. I'll be a chef heart next time. <laughs> and we're going to be now experimenting with new flavors and aromas. Yes. Let's have prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much again for the privilege you gave to each one of us to learn the science of urban spices. You know how it is important. You create those spices and herbs for our enjoyment. And Lord, we want to learn how to use it so we can uh, expand our uh, vocabulary, our experience in the kitchen. And also may we be an ambassador for you and, and use this, this uh, way of cooking as a right hand to, to, uh, to encourage others uh, in the healthy way. Thank you to bless our audience. Pray that uh, you may fill them, your spirit and your presence. Thank you for uh, doctor, our doctor, and thank you for blessing her. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everyone. We will see you April 2nd at 4 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Eastern. See you then, and have a wonderful, blessed week.